A bit bleak looking over there. Muddier than usual. I've set up a little tarp. I'm really pleased with that actually. Um, I've always struggled a bit to, uh, this is a favourite sitting spot of mine. I like to have my back up against that, the, the trunk of the tree, the base of the tree there. I've always struggled before to find a way to sort of get the tarp to sort of nicely keep that bit dry. I'm sure I'm going to get the odd drip now and again, but uh, I've been able to just use two pegs, one down there, one over there, and the rest is all tied up to branches and various bits of tree. We've managed to get a nice taut, fairly taut line here by tying up that top tie-out point. Very nice. Hello, welcome to an English sparkling with Tweedy damp tarp special sitting here on the heath in the rain friday fizz time wonderfully gloomy and damp and drizzly and uh, consequently uh, i seem to have large area of the heath all to myself not many takers today i've featured this before haven't i this is uh is the label going to be visible there i don't know if that's going to work maybe this is Another one from the mixed case from Breaky Bottom. I ordered a new mixed case uh, a few days back and I'm going to just go through them all again in slightly different settings and maybe I'll come up with different answers. This is the Cuvée Cornelis Hendrickson. It's from 2013. It is the blend of all of Peter's grapes. It has Chardonnay, it has Pinot, it has Sable Blanc. So it's a bit of everything, which I think as I probably said before, I assume that was maybe a bit of a difficult year in terms of yield at Breaky Bottom, I don't know. But I've had this before and it is still wonderful. There isn't really a bad wine from Breaky Bottom. Amazingly, this year is the 50th year of Breaky Bottom. Can you believe that? First planted, I believe, in 1974. Which I don't mind saying, <laughs> it's older than me. Not by much, but um... So, Quite an important year, 2024, the half centenary of Peter Hall at Breaky Bottom. Is the lighting a bit weird? I'm guessing I'm sort of slightly in shadow. I'm, I'm trying to put point to the light down so I didn't have it blinding my eyes. So, getting citrus, slightly limey. Wonderfully complex and bitter on the palate in a good way. I've got some foreign object in my wine here. I'm going to extract. I'm picking up a tiny bit of that kind of struck match note. Yeah, that's that's not usual. The zing is really good. Long finish. And it's helping to add a bit of cheer and liveliness to what is otherwise a very damp, rather miserable day here on the heath. Cheers. Wonderfully gloomy. I've um, poured another glass. I'm happy to report that the that those struck match notes have kind of somewhat ebbed away. Still there a little bit, which um, is, again, this is a relatively new thing. I don't remember noticing this prior to the um, the other bottle from this mixed case. So, um, but um, but that's slightly given away, and there's a, a little bit more of the uh, the autolytic character is coming out now. Bit of sort of briochey, croissanty sort of patisserie kind of notes. Yeah, and something sort of something slightly creamy following through onto the palate, but really zingy. I would say more lime than lemon, but it's in that kind of citrusy ballpark. Maybe even I don't know kumquat, something like that, given that kind of bitterness. Yeah, it's zest in the sense of a citrus fruit that includes its rind, a sort of citrus fruit rind bitterness. It's really tightly bound. I think, uh, you know, they're really, really zingy. Um, there's a good bit of minerality in there. Yeah, it's good. I mean, I think the only very slight rough edge, that slightly weird struck match thing, not sure where that came from. Hmm.